Yo bingers, welcome back. Thanks for clicking on the video. I got what I think is a killer comic for us today from 1975. DC presents Tour number two. And this is all Joe Kubert. You get a chance to check out this cover. I love I always love yellow backgrounds. Dawn, the dawn of a new day, over a new world. The ground still issues forth the vapors from the tremendous heat that lies deep in the Earth's core. Dawn, over a world that seems like a nightmare to civilized eyes. The giant dinosaur treads with heavy step. The pterodactyl scream is like that of a hundred eagles. The great desire in the world is to eat, and to eat means to kill. Wherever the eye looks, there is death. The weak are slaughtered by the strong. The never-ending struggle for existence begins with every sunrise in this world of a million years ago. Zoom out, give you a chance to check out this splash page. As a red glow streaks the east, as the croaking and screaming of animals in triumph and agony shakes the steep canyon walls, a man scans the horizon. His strength far surpasses that of the average man today for his very life depends on the power in his arms. In his mind are many questions, and in that inquiring mind lies the factor that distinguishes him from the other beasts. His words are few, but his thoughts are many. The fireball in the sky rises. The rushing water will have many fish. With his bone-crushing axe of stone clenched in his immense fist, he makes his careful way to the rushing waters. His axe is his only protection as he steps wearingly along his treacherous route. The saber-tooth eyes him lazily. It has eaten its fill. Had it not, the man would be fighting to the death, stone axe against claws sharp as daggers. Compared to the world's other inhabitants, man is an insignificant. A man is an insignificant figure, inspiring little respect and no fear. Yet he has survived them all. Why? What has made man so different from all the other beasts who no longer exist? Why, of all the myriad forms of life, does one species emerge and continue to flourish while the mighty titans of prehistoric times die out? The answer lies in a small six-pound mass of blood and tissue, the brain, reflected in the intelligent gleam that shines from his eyes. Here we see the future that is mankind, the civilization that arose from the mire of primordial life. Here is the embodiment of hope buried in the past. Here is Tor, the caveman. Tor picks his way carefully through a jungle where death lurks behind every blade of grass. He will ease his hunger beyond in the distant splash of water. Tor knows that his fingers cannot hold the slippery, swift, darting fish, so he breaks off a spear-like reed. Slowly, he shaves one end to a point. Gingerly, he picks his way through the shallow water, his sharp eyes alert for serpent or swamp beast. Death is swift and merciless in Tor's world. Suddenly, a cry of terror, a small cry. Water beast. The little furry creature is trapped. It plays with the little one. It knows the little one cannot escape. If I am silent enough, I can perhaps save the little beast. Otherwise, it is doomed. Putting all his power and muscle behind it, Tor lets the spear fly. Speed true. The spear bites deeply, and the monster turns its agony on Tor, who grasps, grasps his stone axe, axe and waits. <laughs> Eyes widen with terror, the small monkey-like creature watches his benefactor in a battle to the death. The swamp beast screams in pain and furry. <laughs> Tor's axe whistles through the air with the speed and force of an express train. With one mighty bone-crushing blow, Tor has slain the great swamp lizard. He watches the writhing beast in its last throes. So, little one, you are still frightened? See all the trouble you have caused? I have lost my fish spear. I wonder if you are worth the trouble. 
as Tor turns to cut the new reed spear. You are a friendly little thing. Ew. You like Tor, huh? And in this chaotic new world, a strange friendship is born. A friendship that is rare, even in today's world. Ah, I like Tor. He's a little monkey. He's got a buddy. Grasping toward the little creature, chatters Riley. What is it, little one? You're in no danger. Why do you chatter, show? And then we got this dinosaur coming in. <laughs> the blood scent of the slain swamp beast has reached others. <laughs> the scavenger dinosaur dies alone. I'll call you Chi Chi since you have such a liking for the sound. Hold tightly, Chi Chi. The thunder lizard will not harm you. <laughs> in the uplands, once more, Tor stops and scans the terrain. Do not alarm yourself, little one. They are of Tor's tribe. They are on the hunt. Look, my tribesmen. Tor has at last found a fit companion. The little one has more brains than many. Tor's derisive tone bites deeply. Fearing a loss of his prestige in the eyes of his men, Clar fans his hatred into a murderous rage. Measure your words carefully, or my axe will have your skull. Is it a challenge? If so, I am ready, Clar. Now. But Clar's bravery does not equal his anger. Do not goad me. Or, or what? They just stare at each other. Even as rain will drown the fire, Chi Chi sets up a clamor that forestalls violence between the two men. <laughs> what is it later? Little one, danger? Where? Show me. So we got a lassie scene here. Timmy in the well. Zul is scouting for us. Perhaps it is he. Follow Tor. In this age of mankind, man knows enough to unite for strength. He knows that without his fellow, he is nothing. It is Zul. The terror lizard is after him. <laughs> And here we go. He's got him up on the cliff there. Zol is doomed. We must leave before it turns on us. Chance to check out that panel of art. Here we go. We we must help him. We we will all perish if we show ourselves. We will quit this place now. Inborn in all of us is a basic feeling of mercy, of a love of our fellow man. But in primordial man, this emotion is buried deep beneath the surface. So Tor is regarded as one who has completely lost his reason. I will not watch soul killed and do nothing. Before a hand can stop, can be raised to stop him, Tor scrambles up the cliffside. Gaining the top without attracting the terror lizard's attention, Tor peers on the scene below. <laughs> Summoning all of his strength, Tor puts his broad shoulder behind a seemingly immovable boulder and shows. Rash it down all the. As the last rocks fall, Tor darts from the canyon wall toward the boulder blanketed monster and delivers the death blow. No words pass between Zol and Tor, but their eyes speak the words their mouths cannot form. But Tor has fragrantly bypassed Clar's, Clar's order. Clar's humiliation will be appeased only with Tor's blood. Menacingly, Clar advances behind Tor when the monkey hops on there. You little, I will put an end to your chatter. And then Tor just do knocks him out by striking Clar. Tor has broken the law of his tribe. And as he stands over their fallen leader, the tribesmen close in. Seemingly from nowhere, a flint head spear whistles through the air and buries itself in front of the advancing tribesmen. <laughs> On the canyon wall stands Lokun, chief of the tribe. Who dares pass judgment on a tribesman without Lokun? Mighty Loken, you should have let them finish, Tor. He is a troublemaker. Silence, Ock. 
I had no fear for tour safety. I was protecting my hunter's skulls. As they descend into the valley, dark thoughts race through Ock's mind. It is because of Laura, Loken's daughter, that Tor is spared, perhaps. Perhaps Clar and I could. Stop here! Uh, it's me again, Joe Kubert. Whoa! <laughs> How cool is this, man? Let's examine the situation and compare the lives of these Dawn people to those of our contemporaries today. Tor, independent and fair-minded, wishes only to live unfettered. Clar and Ock are the ever-present who, evil who attempt to twist everything to their own selfish purposes. Lokan must abide by his tribal laws for the good of his people. I guess that's it. Just this little interruption by uh, Joe and now we're back into... Zol is unnoticed as Clar and Ock lay their plans to dispose of Tor. He listens intently while Ock and Clar develop their evil ideas. Big as the Brontosaurus and the Mastodon are, even they will not venture close to the Council Flames. The flames leak skyward as Zol crouches to speak to Tor. Beware of Clar and Ock. They seek to take your life. I hear your words, Zol. I wonder where little Chi-Chi has wandered. Some distance from the fire in the dark shadows of the mountain, Squeal away, my furry fool. Your yelps will bring Tor, as I planned. That sounds like Chi Chi. Wonder what sort of trouble he's in now. Chi 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 Chi! And Tor takes off his running. Without warning, the ground gives way, and Tor falls into a tiger pit. Moments later, a ball of fur streaks into the pit, followed by a hoarse voice that calls out, Here is your companion, Tor. Your companion in death, ha ha! Cha -ding -ding. Oh, some cool DC ads. Here we go. As Clara raises his spear to send it hurling down at Tor, a figure strikes him from behind. It is Zul! They land in a squirming heap in the pit. Clara's axe smashes at Zul with lethal force. Turn and turn. The tribesmen, drawn by the sound of battle, arrive at the tiger pit. Tor has slain Clar, the leader of the hunt. Kill him! Kill him! No. Tor, you are banished from the tribe. If you are found near our heels again, Ox desire will be fulfilled. Go. Without uttering a word in his own defense, Tor leaves his tribe. He is alone to face a hostile world in the world of a million years ago. If you like the adventures and the, and the battles between man and dinosaur intrigue you, you don't want to miss the next startling issue of Tor on sale first week. Well, we don't know about that, but uh, that is a cool little story there. All Joe Kubert, man. Great art, of course. Is the ad if you guys wanted to see what that looked like. And this was an issue two, kind of read like an issue one. I wonder what was in issue one. All right, everybody, you know the drill. You understand how YouTube works and all that stuff. Thanks for hanging out. And until next time, I'll see you in the back issues.